This is big, folks. This is a big problem. So that's what we know. Now, here are things that have been reported to us. This is a very, very complex issue and we need more help. It is not a diagnosis, folks. So if you get that as your diagnosis, you don't have one. We know there is an issue. Hey everyone, I want to give you an update on the pet food fiasco. <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna talk about a few things that we do know and a few things that we suspect or think and what we're gonna do moving forward. We do know that the brands are, the pet food brands are still saying there's no issue. It is still posted on their website. On the private survey that we have had people filling out, so far we have over 1,400 cases reported of pets being made very ill or dying. The survey asks a lot of questions so that we can weed out, was this a pet food problem or could this potentially be something else? Because it is true that dogs vomit occasionally, have diarrhea occasionally, from unknown causes, or they get in the trash, or they eat something bad outside, or they're given a medication that doesn't agree with them. I agree wholeheartedly. So it is not normal for your dog to or cat to vomit a lot or to have diarrhea all the time. It's just not normal. And a vast majority of the cases are reported when a new bag, box, or can is opened and fed and the pet becomes ill within a very short period of time or one pet or two pets in the house are eating that particular food other pets in the house are not eating that food and only the two eating the food get sick and particularly if we have multiple pets in the same household eating the same food and they all get sick could they have something infectious or contagious yes they could but these are going to the veterinarian they're getting lab work and they cannot find an infectious cause. So we are weeding through them. We are very careful to only include things that really look like they are a foodborne illness. With that said, over 1400 cases on the survey that we have verified. We, ha we also verify similar reports on third party platforms. When they match with symptoms of my pet didn't want to eat it, they backed away from it. My pet had bloody vomiting and diarrhea. My pet uh, was very itchy, broke out in hives. My pet started having seizures. These are the symptoms that we're seeing. And so we correlate those with other reports from other sites. Now, some of those have been scrubbed recently, so that makes it a little more difficult. We do have screenshots of a lot of them before they were scrubbed. Um, and why would they be scrubbed? You tell me. So very commonly, this correlates to a new bag or can, even if they've been eating the same brand of food and the same line of food. So if they've been on a sensitive stomach food of the same brand for the past five years, and then they got a new bag and suddenly they got ill, that is a correlation that we are seeing. Three dogs in one neighborhood. The dogs don't see each other. The three people just loosely know each other. Three of them in the ER, exact same symptoms, multiple blood transfusions, not able to save any of them. The only common denominator, all three had been fed a new bag of food and within three meals, they're in the ER and then they're dead. We've got a cat, new bag of food, three meals, dead, bleeding into the chest. So, this is, this is not made up. These are real animals, real family members, real problems, and these are multiple brands of food. The FDA is aware that there is a problem. They're looking into it, so we think. So we do know that a state regulator in the state of Pennsylvania went and picked up a food sample and looked at the owner and said, we're not gonna find anything. Well, you're not gonna find anything if you don't look and if you don't know what to look for. Uh, somebody in the state of Georgia, their pet food was tested. All they tested for was E. coli and salmonella and said, nothing to see here, just because it was negative for E. coli and salmonella. Well, there's about 2,000 other things that you could test for or not. FOIA requests, Freedom of Information Act requests, have been made to FDA by a lot of people. And the response that we're getting is, we may take up to 18 months to grant your request. 18 months, how many animals die while we're waiting? So 
That's what we know. Now, here are things that have been reported to us. We have reports of truckloads, truck, tractor trailer, truckloads of seemingly fine pet food being dumped. Employees being told, don't take any of that food. That food is going to the dump. So newly made or not so that, but on a tractor trailer, supposedly ready to be delivered to stores. Don't take it. It's going to the dump. Multiple truckloads of pet food going to a landfill. Pet food being dumped. While at the same time, we also have empty shelves in stores. We have signs being put up in stores that say, due to a supply chain shortage, we may not have these brands available for months. But wait a minute, you're dumping food. But there's a supply chain shortage and you're not going to have any for months? And on a lot of websites, these foods are marked down to half price. And not only are they half price, you can also get a $30 e-coupon. At the same time, they're literally trying to give it away. Now, why are we trying to give it away? Because on the Saving Pets One at a Time original Facebook page, 2,000 new requests today for sick pets, people looking for help. 2,000 in one day. This is big, folks. This is a big problem. I didn't make it up. I'm the reporter. I don't feed this stuff. It's not my animals, but I can't stand that people's animals are dying. F from the standpoint of the symptoms, we are very suspicious that we may be dealing with some sort of pesticide because what symptoms do pesticides cause? If we look at rodent poisoning, rodenticides, they cause hemorrhaging. What are we getting? Hemorrhaging. Animals with spontaneous nosebleeds, just blood coming out of both ends, bleeding into their chest, bleeding into their abdomen, their bone marrow being shut down and they're anemic. We're also getting seizures. These are all symptoms of pesticides. Now, why would we have pesticides anywhere near pet food? Well, let's see, you've got a lot of grain, you've got a lot of food products, and you may have pest problems. You may have bugs. We've seen so many reports of bags of food with, filled with bugs and maggots and cobwebs and spider webs. Of course, there's bug problems where there's food involved. I mean, all, all dry good foods go through some sort of debugging process. That's, that's just part of it. Otherwise, you'd be opening up your box of cereal and bugs would be flying out of it. So that's what we suspect. Unfortunately, one, there are many, many, many kinds of pesticides. And knowing exactly how to test for them is extremely difficult. And our lab has not been able to verify which contaminant we are dealing with at this point. And it's not something that is give, going to give us specific results on the autopsy. We get general descriptions. And by the way, if your pet is diagnosed with hemorrhagic gastroenteritis, that is not a diagnosis. That is a description. That is a description of inflammation in the guts with bleeding. It is not a cause. It is not a diagnosis. I just had this conversation with a pathologist last week, and he actually laughed when I said, well, hemorrhagic gastroenteritis is not a diagnosis. It's a symptom. And he laughed and said, you're absolutely right, but I see it as a diagnosis all the time. It is not a diagnosis, folks. So if you get that as your diagnosis, you don't have one. All you have is symptoms. You have bloody vomiting and diarrhea and a very sick pet. We do know that these autopsies need, or necropsies need to be done in a very specific way. So far, I have yet to see an, a necropsy where they tested stomach contents. Folks, this is a foodborne illness. We need to test stomach contents. That means we need the whole animal sent to the diagnostic lab to be, to, to be looked at. If you have a necropsy done in your veterinary office and all they do is open the animal up and take tissue samples of the lung and the heart and the liver and the kidneys, that isn't going to tell us what we're looking for. If you 
have a pet that you believe was made sick by their food, please save the lot number, the expiration date, the brand name, all that information. If you have the bag, save the bag, seal it up tight, put it in a cool, dark area. Your freezer is fine, but seal it up tight. Make sure it is not anywhere where an animal can get into it. We're not going to send anything out for testing right now. I've got a lot of samples and you're still welcome to send us samples, but until we find a lab that can promise us that they will do the testing at the level that we need, we're not going to keep wasting good money on testing that isn't going to find what we are looking for. So at, at this point, we need toxicology experts. We need someone who this is their thing. So if you know a veterinary or human toxicologist that has great ways to sample things, um, who I would be more than willing to talk to a toxicologist and explain what we're looking for and what we think needs to be done with testing. This is a very, very complex issue and we need more help. This is one of those, this is something, it's, it, it's a little trite because it's been said so much, but if you see something, say something. If you see pet food being dumped in a dumpster, by the way, we've got videos of people dumpster diving and taking out bags. If there's pet food in the dumpster, you probably shouldn't take it home and feed it. But what I would request is if you are behind a pet store and you see their dumpster and you peek in and it's filled with pet bags of pet food, could you please take a picture and send it on over? If you see trucks of pet food being dumped at the local landfill, please take a picture and send it over. If you go to your local landfill and you see bags of pet food there, please take a picture and send it on over. Uh, these can also be sent to Susan at truthaboutpetfood.com. At this point, we need the state regulators to step up and do their job. We need FDA to step up and do their job. We know there is an issue. It is a big issue. My inbox is full of this issue. And I feel so sorry for every pet parent that I talk to that has gone through this, that has lost a family member. Their kids have lost their best friend. And it has to stop. And it can only stop if we can prove exactly the contaminant we're looking at and exactly which brands are involved, who is dumping what and where, and the damage that is potentially doing to the environment to wildlife. And if we do have a pesticide in pet food and your children play with that pet food or eat that pet food, if you have toddlers in your house, please don't leave pet food sitting out because they tend to do that. And this could be a huge, huge problem. And for those of you who are cleaning up the bloody vomiting and diarrhea, wear gloves, probably wear a mask. We don't know what this contaminant is, and we don't want you to get sick handling it either. So really critical. Everybody remain vigilant. Please look for information, find information. No clue is too small. Things that have been reported to us have been amazing and also very helpful. So we really encourage you to continue to do that. And that's, that's the update of where we are. It is an ongoing issue. Like I said, 2,000 new cases in the inbox today of sick pets. Not all of them are going to be related to pet food, but a lot of them will be. And one death is too many.